Andy, thank you so much for sitting down with me this morning. Uh, I know that you've got a lot that you'd like to talk to us about as far as uh, wireless LAN capability. But first of all, if you could give us a bit of an introduction, if you could tell me uh, your full name, uh, your role, uh, how long you've been with Dimension Data, and exactly what your role encompasses. Yes, well, my name's Andy Tipper. I've been with Dimension Data Advanced Infrastructure about eight years now uh, in a pre-sales management role, but I'm now uh, moving into a solutions architecture role and fundamentally I look after the whole design of a solution from uh, concept to uh, implementation. So uh, when we're getting an inquiry in, we look through the inquiry, we look through the specification, the drawings and so forth, and we create a full solution. Now that solution can be uh, a number of different uh, elements to it, so you can have uh, passive in terms of the cabling infrastructures, active, that is the networking, the wireless LAN of course, and then there's all sorts of other facets, for example data center technology, un uninterruptible power supplies, UPS, cabinets, so we go for the whole sort of portfolio of various technologies, systems and services, and I basically pull all these solutions together and effectively architect a full solution. So when we're speaking about wireless LAN, um, can you just you know kind of go through exactly what a low wireless LAN system is, uh, and and you know uh, how Dimension Data addresses you know that that need and creates that solution? Yeah. Okay. Well, wireless LANs have been around in the marketplace for for many years now, and I suppose when you look at networking, there's there's two ways to do it. You can either have a physical cable, which a device is connected to, and by devices we're looking at computers, laptops, uh, telephones for example. And the alternative of course is a wireless network. Now in the early days um, the speeds of transmission were, were very very low and a connection through a piece of cable was very very much faster. So people couldn't really use a wireless LAN for a great deal of applications. However the technology has moved on in leaps and bounds. There have been phenomenal um, improvements in the speed of transmission on wireless LANs. And effectively, the if I can call it the sort of throughput, the, the bandwidth which a wireless LAN can actually provide a particular user is now comparable to the wired or the cabled network. So if we're looking at exactly where a wireless LAN um, would sit as far as a, a build program. I mean, does this fit into new builds? Can it fit into refurbs? Can it fit into a move out and change? Or is it, you know, a, a real kind of all-encompassing system that, that we can deliver? I think generally it's an all-encompassing. Uh, effectively, you could you could treat it as an overlay. I think it'll always be wired connections uh, because you can flood wire a building. You can put wires to desks, but. The technology flavor now is mobility. People need to move around. So there's different scenarios if we look at sort of different environments. For example, in a building, the wired network is still predominant and the wireless is an overlay simply to allow people to move around the building and still have technology. And what's created the demand and the increase is smartphones, tablets, devices by any other name. So if we're looking at, at physical projects, I mean, you know, obviously, if you can, please go into detail. Uh, if you can mention clients, please do. If you can't completely understand, can you give us an insight into some of the, the, the projects, some of the size and scales and the types of projects that, that we've delivered here at Dimension Data? Yes, I mean, if, if you look at the sort of projects that, that really make use of a wireless LAN. The most obvious one is a shopping centre environment. So, for example, um, Dimension Data Advanced Infrastructure designed and deployed a wired and wireless LAN at Stratford Shopping Centre in East London. And that comprised 850 wireless access points. So in that scenario, what it's basically doing is providing this radio frequency coverage for shoppers, visitors, staff, so that they can move around the building and have effectively seamless communication to their devices. 
So whereas people in a shopping centre environment will have smartphones and tablets, in a more commercial sort of environment, there's technologies such as voice over Wi-Fi that come in. And in fact, the design of those sort of networks demand a very, very careful approach to the design. It's all sort of high density, high performance wireless networks. We we'll talked briefly on the, you know, some, some of the smaller advantages of a, a, a wireless LAN network versus kind of a, a wire in a traditional approach. If you had to bullet point those, could you kind of bullet point some of the, uh, the benefits derived from installing wireless LAN? Um, well, as I said, I think the, the biggest, um, I suppose, bullet point or reason for having a wireless LAN is, is literally mobility. It's giving people freedom to move around so they're not fixed in any one particular location. And in many environments, if you're looking at so, you know, commercial, retail, office environments, it gives people the ability to communicate wherever they are and because the technology is now improving, the speed of connections gives them an instantaneous connection to whatever service they want. So for example, what people demand these days is immediate connections from their smartphones or tablets to the internet. They don't want to see any perceived delay. And therefore, the advances in the wireless technology allow people to be able to do this. And when we're looking at technologies, the, the speed increase has been so dramatic now, it is likely to increase as well. So there is a possibility in certain areas of seeing a totally wireless environment in lieu of wired. Now, you'll never ever negate the need for a, wireless, uh, a wired network because the access points themselves, and these are the devices that actually communicate with the devices such as smartphones and tablets, laptops, computers. They always need a cable to provide that link to the system and effectively um, the wireless networks now are fully managed as well. Now without going into too many sort of technical details, wireless is basically radio frequency propagation. And one of the biggest issues with a wireless LAN is interference. Now, it's often said that you know things like uh, microwave ovens can interfere, but we've also got mobile phone technology that can interfere. And in fact, one of the harshest RF environments, if I could call it that, is a shopping centre. Now, for example, if you look at Westfield, 350 retail units and it's highly likely that most of those individual retail units will actually want their own communication system which is wireless you know you can walk into some of the major retailers and they might offer free Wi-Fi to their clients the restaurant chains offer free Wi-Fi connectivity and effectively You've, you've got all these particular Wi-Fi networks all interfering with each other. Now there are guidelines and there are certain frequencies that the wireless networks work on to make that scenario a little bit easier to manage. However, in the solutions that we look at, effectively the whole wireless network is managed by something called wireless LAN controllers. So effectively they manage the RF environment and there's some very very clever techniques at the moment which effectively aim to mitigate what I'm terming RF interference. So for example if we go back to Westfield whereas each retail unit's got its own Wi-Fi environment the whole campus has got a campus-wide RF environment so in effect, what we have to do is create an RF policy so that we can advise the retailers what sort of frequencies and channels they should be using to try to mitigate the interference on the main campus network, which basically would affect performance. So it's very, very clever technology, and manufacturers such as Cisco have got various techniques such as beamforming, which effectively tries to 
focus the, the RF energy on particular devices and it, it's all about mitigation and trying to get over the RF interference. Just for, for people uh, looking at this who aren't 100% uh, au fait with, with, with damage to advanced infrastructure projects, we turn Westfield as Stratford, don't we? we yeah, we do. Stratford, so. Yes, that's right. Yeah. To sum up then, um, as, as kind of our final point during this session, we know that obviously wireless LAN um, does have major advantages, but what are the major advantages of using dimension data advanced infrastructure as a supply and installation partner? Right, well that's an interesting question really because as I alluded to, in the early days of wireless LAN deployments, the technology was relatively crude. However, as I've described, the, the environments where wireless is now used are so complex that you need a company that, that understands not only wired networking but the whole sort of radio frequency environment and precisely what customers want, what applications they're going to use on the wireless network, what speeds of transmission. So we use various survey and modeling tools. So we'll input drawings, for example, from a building into the tool and simulate the environment so that when we come to actually deploy we've got a fair degree of accuracy in terms of the location of the access points uh, and all the other equipment so that we can guarantee not only coverage but it's more this performance so if you're looking again at a, a shopping center or a stadium environment where there's so many people wanting to connect at any one particular time you've got to use a company that thoroughly understands each of these separate environments. So it could be a small office environment which is relatively easy to manage, a shopping centre which is far more complex, or a stadium where you could literally get tens of thousands of people trying to use their smart devices simultaneously. So you've got to use a company that understands all of these particular scenarios. Andy, thank you so, so much for your time for sitting down with this one. It's been massively, massively educational uh, and massively valuable. Thank you again. Thank you.